My name is Krishna Nagendran. I'm one of the intervention cardiologists with CIS. Well, it feels great to be back in South Louisiana. I first moved to Louisiana when I was in high school from India. That was in 93. And it just feels like I'm back home. It's it's good feeling to be back in the community that I grew up in. And uh, yeah, my family's here, so I'm happy. Peripheral vascular disease is more prevalent than heart disease and it's very underdiagnosed. We diagnose maybe 20% of actual peripheral vascular disease and out of which around 10% actually gets treated. So if you see, you know, varicose veins, ulcers in the leg, highest rate of amputation happens in Louisiana. One of the main reasons to focus on peripheral vascular disease is it's more prevalent in our, po our patient population. And, uh, you know, you save a leg, you actually save someone's life and quality of life. Signs of PA, peripheral vascular disease can be something as simple as a little swelling around your ankle at the end of the day can be the starting stage of peripheral vascular disease to having varicose veins in your legs to ulcers to having blockages in your arteries where you actually have pain in your calf muscle when you walk and uh, you lose you can see hair loss in your leg well those are the broad symptoms of peripheral vascular disease so if someone notices swelling around the ankle or pain in the calf muscle when they walk or have very visible varicosities they should see a vascular doctor a cardiovascular doctor most at risk are smokers diabetics smokers people who stand up on the feet and, and work a lot get varicose veins and they're more, more they're more at risk for peripheral venous disease so Smoking is the biggest risk factor for peripheral arterial disease. Well, you know, treatment for peripheral vascular disease is a, is a whole spectrum of uh, uh, treatment and it all depends on one's symptoms. It can be as simple as medications, exercise, varying compression socks, to needing a simple procedure like an ablation which takes 10 minutes in the clinic versus a stent and an angiogram. So it all depends on patient's severity of the disease and symptoms. That's why it's important that they come early so they don't reach to a stage where they actually need a stent and uh, early interventions with medications and lifestyle changes can prevent them from having stents in the leg. Cardiologists treating legs, if you see cardiovascular, so we take care of all the veins and arteries in your body as well as your heart. Versus if you go to a vascular doctor, they look at just the veins and arteries in your body. They don't, they're not qualified enough to look at your heart. So we're like a one-stop shop. We look at the heart, we look at the arteries, we look at the veins, we do everything. Patients who have blockages in the leg, just by having blockages in your leg, there's 30% chances that you have blockage in your heart. So most of my patients with blockages in the legs, I actually make sure the heart is okay first. Iberia Medical Center, our hospital and staff are fully equipped and uh, you know we have a great cath lab and great staff. In a cath lab, most of the procedures what we do for the legs are completely outpatient procedures. It, uh, it takes me anywhere between an hour and a half to two hours for the complete procedure to be done and patient has two to four hours of bed rest and they go home. Nowadays we switch to going through your wrist to put a stent in your leg and you go home in half an hour to an hour once we're done. I would suggest first talk to your primary care physician about it okay and you know they're the captains of the ship and they can do any kind of screening test and they would send you to the nearest cardiologist you have. <laughs>